when we're talking about a treatment, we're talking about a longer form of a document. When we're talking about a synopsis, we're talking about a one sheet. And for me personally, I actually do a lot better with my synopsis after I've done the treatment first. So after I have totally flushed everything out and written down um, you know, what I want to deal with in the, my three acts, then it's easier for me to then synthesize it and bring it down to that one sheet or that one page. So I just wanted to be real clear because one of the things that I noticed was even as I was talking with Kamau and Derek is that we were throwing the word synopsis and treatment around and I said, you know, let me be a little bit more specific. You have a question. What, say that one more time. What exactly is a, uh, a synopsis? I'm not familiar with what a, a treatment is as far as you know, shooting videos or whatever. What is a, a synopsis? The way that um, the word synopsis is often used, whether you're looking at a documentary or whether you're looking at um, um, a feature film um, or scripted film, what you're looking at is a one sheet. And a lot of times I call it a one sheet. So it's a, a one page document that essentially summarizes your vision, the characters, the tone, of your project. Um, a lot of times that one sheet will also have a visual that represents your project. It'll be a nice JPEG. Oftentimes with that one sheet um, or synopsis, it will have um, your log line as well. And I'll go back and break down each one of those in terms of dealing with the log line. Before you leave tonight, you'll know exactly what it is. And before you leave tonight, um, you'll begin to think about the different aspects of your treatment. So as well. Like, a, uh, like if you go to the show and they show you a, a preview of a movie, or, you know, that quick 30 second or one minute of a... Is a trailer. Okay, all right. Is a trailer. Yeah. And um, when you think about um, a, a log line, when you think about um, a treatment, those things are used to push what a trailer is going to ultimately be. And I'm going to go through that and give you all that information before the night is over, I promise. Okay. We know you honor all your promises. I do. Okay, so um, a little bit of quick, quick background about me. Um, I was born in LA and raised in Chicago. Um, I still frequent LA because I have ties there. I am the historian emeritus for the Cosby Screenwriting Program, which means that I taught at USC for two semesters with the program. It is the only, or before it phased out, was the only black screenwriting program um, within the United States. It was housed at USC and it was funded by Bill Cosby. And it was my job to get um, my students, emerging filmmakers, to really think about their characters and the type of projects they were producing from a conscious and historic level. So um, Bill Cosby's vision was that the filmmakers that came out um, not focus so much in on all the negative stereotypes in the black community that they began to think a little bit more broadly in terms of the types of characters that they were creating. Um, currently I am faculty at Olive Harvey College in the Department of African American Studies. I am also a filmmaker, was in the first um, Diverse Voices and Docs program with the Gwendolyn Brooks project and I think that's pretty much it. Next month I'll be able to make a new announcement that I cannot make because I'm being taped. All right, but real, ex real excited about that. I'm not gonna make him do that. I'm not gonna make him do that. All right, no, come out say keep it going and he's the director. All right, so what I wanna do to keep myself on task is I wanna talk a little bit about some of the goals for the workshop really quickly. What I want to do is I want to carve out um, time and space to challenge you to think about your projects. Um, and I want to um, discuss the anatomy and the structure of a log line. And just going back to the first point, being a writer, I went through the creative writing program at Chicago State University, so that's actually my first muscle. As filmmakers, I feel like we have a primary muscle, you know, whether it be writing, shooting, editing, and then we have secondary muscles that we build over time. But when we come to this art, there's usually something that we do very well, and that's what I refer to as my primary muscle. So I made sure I carved out writing time 
in this space. Yes, sir. Uh, were you part of Christine Houston's uh, writing class? Yes, Christine Houston and I um, have a short film that went to Cannes. So, wow, that's and got distribution as well. So, um, hmm? when, when, when did you do it? The yeah, Cannes Film Festival, Festival in, oh, in France, 2012. 2012. So we went to Cannes in 2012. So um, before you all leave, you're going to also write a log line for your project um, or for your life. I'll let you choose. And also, I want to discuss the essential elements of a treatment for both documentary and feature films. As I was taking a moment to just prepare for this, and I was breaking down a presentation, a lot of the elements apply to both documentary and feature films because um, when we talk about creating a treatment, we're talking about telling a story. And even if you're doing a documentary, you think about um, your subjects as characters. So it really is not a huge difference. There are some differences in language in terms of what someone may be looking for. So in terms of defining a log line, um, a log line is a one, no more than two sentence summary of what your project is. So I should be able to look at your log line and tell exactly what your project is. Um, quick disclaimer, I was looking and I was pulling some examples of log lines and I actually was surprised. I don't like a lot of the log lines that I see. I think they're too simplistic. Um, I feel that um, also your log lines are going to need to change. So if you are applying for funds and you are applying to um, a grant maker who funds feature films and documentaries, then in your log line you're going to say blank is a feature film about or blank is a documentary about, okay? So blank is a narrative film about or blank is a documentary about. But if you are applying to Cartemquin for a grant, what word don't you need anymore? Documentary. Documentary because it's a given. You know, you're utilizing words and space that you don't have to utilize. So when you are writing your log lines, I want to say to you, don't get married to them because in certain situations they really do need to change. Um, log lines are written in third person, present tense, and we'll talk more about that. Um, even if, you know, I'm doing a documentary and it's dealing with myself, um, I'm still referring to Shahari as a character, okay? Um, the goal of a log line is to entice the readers towards your scripted and your produced project is also known as a blurb. So if I am funding projects and I'm sitting at my desk and I pick up your one sheet, I want to read that log line. If that log line doesn't hook me, I'm not going to read any further. There's no need for me to keep on reading if I have 1,500 one sheets sitting on my desk. So your log line should really grab the reader. Um, one thing I say um, and one thing I learned really at Chicago State with Kelly Ellis particularly is that um, you should never come to the page lightly. You know, whatever it is, you should just leave it on the page. Just like if you're dancing, they say leave it on the floor. Or if you're playing basketball, they say just leave it all on the court. That's how your writing should be. You know, even if writing is not your primary muscle, whatever your core is, you should pull it out of your body and literally leave it on the page. After a script is produced as a screenplay, that log line is going to be used for marketing and also to structure the trailer. Okay, so a lot of times people will take that log line and this will also drive what that trailer looks like because even though a log line is one to two sentences, within that one to two sentences, we're gonna get a lot of things. We're gonna get character, we're gonna get story. There should also be creative tension in that log line. I like for my log lines to be visual. I like for them to feel intense. I think, but more so than anything, if I was to say it was my thumbprint, I like for them to feel intense, okay? So you should feel, just by reading this sentence, as if, you know, what's going to happen to this character? Because when you read my log line, I want you to care about my character because caring about my character is going to make you, the reader, want to do what? Read the script. 
read the script, see the movie. You know, so with that log line, I'm really getting you yeah. invested. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want you to like, oh man, I need more. Wanted to give you some examples because it's one thing to talk about first person, second person, third person. It's another thing to put it on the page and then you just like, you know, you say, oh. Okay, now, also just in terms of log lines, I want to tell you how strong log lines are. If they're written well without you even telling, without me even telling you the title of the film, you should be able to tell me the title of the film from the log line. So this is the first one. And I'm going to ask this gentleman here to read it for us. Okay. With feeling. All right. After a twist of transports a lonely Kansas farm girl to a magical land, she sets out on a dangerous journey to find a wizard with the power to send her home. Okay, stop. So this is a log line for what film? The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. Okay? Everyone knows that story, and without me saying, this is The Wizard of Oz, your log lines, or that log line, should stand apart from the film as your film is established and gets play over time. Um, within this particular line, what are some things that stand out to you? Who's present in this line? In terms of character, the lonely Kansas farm girl. Okay, so the fact that um, she's going, she's coming from Kansas, and she's going to a magical land. What does that tell us about this story? It's make believe. It's fantasy. It's make believe. But has anybody ever left a place they know and go to a place that they don't know at all? Okay. So take a minute and just think about how it feels to leave your home and go to an unknown place. How does that feel? It's like a dangerous Scary, journey. exciting, okay? Leaving Memphis to come to Chicago. Leaving Memphis to come to Chicago. So you all, that's literally just five words, but it resonates with you because you've had that experience of leaving a place that you know going to a place that you don't know. And see, here's the thing with log lines, and here's the thing with what we write is quite psychological. So when I write things in such a way, I am typing, type, tapping into the psyche of the person that's reading it. Because what I'm doing is I am giving them an experience that they know. If I'm also giving them an experience that they know in the midst of my story, they can relate to my story and they are more likely to fund my project. Okay, so she sets out on a dangerous journey. So I'm telling you, hell, there's some danger. You know, something might happen to this girl. She might die. She might not make it back to Kansas, right? And she's gonna find a, a wizard, you know, um, with the magical power to send her home, okay? She might find him, she might not find him. We don't know what's gonna happen. But look at all that that log line is doing and all that log line is conjuring up. Finding a magical wizard to send you back to a safe place. What does that conjure up for you? Of finding that one person that can rescue you. What does that conjure up for you in terms of feelings? Comfort. 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 Intrigue. So as human beings, we all have a desire to feel a sense of comfort, okay? So we can get that. And you all, that's one sentence, okay? One sentence. Okay. Um, can you read the second one? Fight for independence from his parents. An African prince goes to the queen. To queen. To the queen. Oh, I said to queen. New York to find a wife home. He can respect for her intelligence and will. Okay, and what does that film sound like? Coming to America. Coming to America. So you see how these different things tell a story, they link to stories we've, we've already seen, these films that we've watched. How many of you have seen the log line for Coming to America on paper or on the screen before? Never. Never. <laughs> but immediately you knew that that was that film because that's how strong the storytelling is in the line. Okay, let's go with this gentleman here. Can you read this next log line for us? Sir's boy seeks to help. The psychologist says he struggles with freeing himself 
of the desire of affliction. He sees dead people. Okay. So it's kind of old school, but some people know this one. Six cents. Six cents. I love six cents. He sees dead people. Right. This is something that they used a little bit later. Okay. This is something that they use a little bit later. So sometimes you have a log line and you're using it to sell. Yeah, and then you may use it later on if it's in a festival or if they're using something for promotional purposes. So it changes based upon what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, one more log line, and I just wanted to make sure I did one for documentaries. Okay, uh, anybody, I'll take a volunteer. Can someone read this one for us? You, sir. Using basketball as a tool, two inner city youth fight to bridge the educational gap and transcend poverty. High learn? No, not high learn. Hoop dreams. Oh. Hoop dreams. <laughs> okay, and then um, just going back to this last one, what do we know about these two two youth? They're from the inner city. They're from the inner city. They're trying to transcend poverty. They have goals, they're trying to get over a hump. You know, so these are young men who are really, really, really fighting for survival. They're trying to get out of poverty. They're trying to get better access to education because yes, they want to play basketball, but if you really look at hoop dreams, it's also an opportunity to go to that particular school which is gonna help them later on in life. Okay, so a log line. I want to look at how you're gonna construct this. So. If you are a, a builder, how do you build this log line and how do you think about it so that you can easily sit down at any point and you can just plug your elements in, play with your language, flip it around. So I actually created this little template and a log line is character and setting, okay, because we need to know who we're dealing with, plus a goal. Your characters need a goal. That's the only thing that's going to support a film, mm -hmm. a feature film, whether it's a documentary or a narrative. If I'm going to sit there for an hour and 10 minutes, I need for this person to have something that they want and they desire because that also resonates with me. How many of you have ever wanted or desired something? Ever. The room. Okay. So because I'm able to build that in to my structure, I can actually connect with a lot of different characters in a lot of different films. So character and setting plus the goal. And this can actually be flipped around, you all, plus some kind of conflict, OK? So all of you have wanted something at some point in your life. How does it feel when someone tells you you can't have it? It feels like conflict, but how does it feel to your heart when I tell you you can't have what you want? You're disappointed, okay? So if you've done any type of writing workshop before, or even if you think about your favorite films, if I was to put them on a, a visual chart, they do this, okay? So that is me moving toward my goal. We get excited a lot of times in the film. That's a montage. Dun, 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 right? And then I get knocked down, okay? And then that's a low point that tugs at my heart. You know, that may be my conflict. But all of those things are making me really care about that character. It's pulling me through that film. It's challenging me. And it's keeping me engaged for this hour and 15 minutes. So character and setting plus the goal plus the conflict equals what happens, okay? So you don't have to always tell me what's gonna happen or how the film is gonna end. So when I say what happens, I'm not talking about give us your ending, but tell us um, what type of action comes from the character um, working for this goal and that particular conflict. And you can kind of see that in some of those log lines. And some log lines totally leave that off and leave you wondering. And that type of um, decision really is up to you as the writer in terms of how much information you give away with your log line. If you're trying to sell a film, 
Do you want to give more information in your log line or less? less. 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 I'm going to buy something I, I don't understand or don't know what's about. You're trying to sell it. You're trying to sell it to a studio. Okay. You're trying to get me to put down $20 million for your film. Are you going to give me more information in a log line or less? less. More. You're going to give me more. more. I'm not spending my $20 million on something I don't know. I don't know. The mystery isn't cute in that situation. However, because you're saying log lines have to be short. Right? Log lines need to be short, but I'm talking about, but you can still reveal information. You can tell me what happens at the very end of that sentence. You know, you can tell me if we go back after a twister transports a lonely Kansas farm girl to a magical land, she sets out on a journey to find a wizard with the power to send her home and then she dies. So very quickly, you can actually wrap that up. You can tell me what happens. Oh, okay. yeah. But if you tell me all that, what's the point of going to see the movie? I already know she, she died. It's not exciting anymore. Was that less but to the investor in the studio, they want to To the investor in the studio, you want to give more information. But to an audience okay. who you want to come and see your film, you want to hold information back. You want to hold that back because you want them to want to see this film. Okay, so character and setting plus goal plus conflict equals what happens. Now I'm going to toss a question on the table, but then I'm going to continue on and then we'll come back to the question at the end. Um, so I'm going to ask you to split your brain in half. One side of it will be thinking about this question and the other half will be paying attention to my presentation. Okay, so if you wrote a log line for your life, how would it read? And a lot of times I like to do this as an exercise, um, giving credit where credit is due. This is a Jennifer Grisanti exercise. She's a consultant in LA and she does nothing but log line structure, et cetera. Um, but I think when practicing with log lines, if you start to think about yourself, if you start to look in your family, um, if you start to look at people on the street, you can actually write log lines about them based upon the information that you have. And because these are real people in front of you, it actually makes it a lot easier. So then when you sit down with your characters, it's not as hard. So we're going to come back to that question at the end of this. If you wrote a log line for your life, how would it read? Okay, a treatment. So you all, um, a treatment is a self-contained document that should summarize the most important components of your project. Um, if you are applying for funding and you're going through the Diverse Voices and Docs program, um, if you were applying to a screenwriting fellowship, um, television, writers fellowship, any of those, oftentimes they are looking for a treatment. And actually with the television um, writing fellowships, they actually want the script oftentimes. But as you're applying for fellowships and opportunities, they would like to see your treatment. So. Um, suggested length is usually three to five pages. That's not etched in stone. Um, I'll give an example. I was going through, I was a finalist for, um, for um, the ITVS fellowship. The first submission, they wanted a three to five page treatment. And then the second submission, um, actually first submission, I think they wanted Two to, two to three pages. The second submission, they wanted five pages. So, you know, despite what I'm saying in this workshop, it's very important for you to read the instructions of whatever it is they are asking for. And I'll say this, I think that as creative people, I think creative people are cocky. I think creative people have it in their mind of what their vision is and their way is right. Even if the instructions are asking you for something different, will, and I'm including myself, we'll go running down the street and we'll do what we want to do. Instructions are very specific and they're there for a reason. It's not just to see, um, can you do this? It's also sometimes to see if you're gonna follow the instructions. If I give you instructions about a submission for something that I'm funding and you don't follow them, what does that tell me about you? And do you think that this is an easy person to work with or do you think this person might be a little bit rough to work with? A little rough. So if I have 20 filmmakers to choose from who are finalists 
am I going to choose the ones that totally disregarded the instructions or am I going to choose the ones that seem like they may be a little bit easier to work with because my money is on the table. If I'm spending my money, am I going to spend my money with somebody who's going to give me a hard time? I feel like such a guy right now. I got to say it. I'm going to spend my money. <laughs> Somebody's going to give me a hard time. Am I? No. So read those instructions. That's very important because when you apply for things, you are also revealing your personality. Okay. So within your treatment, you want to clearly present your story, including your primary characters. So that's who we're following. You know, that's who um, we're really invested in. Your secondary characters. Um, they're also called elements there. So your secondary characters. Sometimes you have one character, but then there's also a, a sub-story. You have an A story, you might have a B story. Your structure. How are you going to tell this story? Okay. Now, if it is a, um, if it is a narrative film, you're not going to tell me your structure. You're not. It should read like a story. But if it is a documentary, you are going to tell me your structure. After sitting here listening to you, mm -hmm. like with the log line, I don't know if any of y'all are here, artists or writers or whatever, but the log line to me, I'm just tripping off the similarity as far as being an artist. It's like what you said, as far as getting everything together, the log line with an artist, like say I got songs I done told stories, as an artist, I got three minutes to get my point across and to tell you this entire story. Or I got literally 15 seconds, 16 bars or a verse to tell you an entire story, everything, and build that, you know, that that build that that interest up in you to make you want to continue hearing more. So it's like I'm sitting here listening to you, and it's, I never knew it was like similarities like that between as far as being an actual artist and you know, as far as filming, you know. Getting, going through the through the motions and everything as far as to ask for grants and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's like that's it's, it, it. It can be a challenge, but it's a good challenge. Though. I want to draw a parallel. When I think about a log line, I think about a hook. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so same thing, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So that hook in that song that is repetitive that stays with you, you know, because it's a single line and makes you want to listen to that song over and over, that's how it should be with your film. Okay, so tone, okay. Tone, you all, when I talk about tone, I'm talking about feeling. So how do these words on this page make you feel? And that's kind of what we're dealing with when I'm asking you um, about some of the psychological aspects of how the words are structured on the page, that tension in that line, because your ability to make people feel just by reading your words is also what's gonna make your project sell. You know, I, if you're just writing and you're not able to pull forth some type of emotion, whether it's happiness, sadness, it's good if you can get it all up in there, right? Cause that means they did this and they're like, woo, I'm gonna find this film, okay? Um, but write in such a way that you're actually pulling forth emotion and you're doing that by hooking into commonalities between your character um, and the reader. Access. So access, um, the way that this is here, and you, I pulled this straight from a documentary website. Um, if you are writing a narrative film, a lot of times you're gonna have a cover letter and that you're gonna talk about your access. And a lot of times that's not if you're writing it, but that's if you're trying to direct or produce. If you're trying to direct or produce and someone is helping you with financing, they need to know what access you have to actors, talent, et cetera. But if you are working um, in documentaries, you really need to be able to tell them what type of access you have to your primary subjects. Because you can have a great idea for a documentary, but if you don't have access to those subjects, well then I can give you the money and you're not gonna be able to move this project forward. So your access is very important, okay? Um, and I would say look at the funder and make a decision if you wanna be overt or covert with your access. But a lot of times with those documentary applications, they ask you your access. So it's not a problem with wearing that on your sleeve. And 
they want your bio. Your bio should parallel the access you say you have. There should be some consistencies. So the bio is really subtle, right? Because you're just talking about yourself. But then when they look back um, at this access that you're gonna answer in terms of a question, they need to see um, that in 1996, you know, you graduated from the Gwendolyn Brooks Center and now you are writing or looking at exploring the life of Gwendolyn Brooks, okay? So it's there. Um, characters, your main and your, your secondary subjects, so you wanna talk about them. Um, originality, you wanna make sure that when you write, um, what you're writing is highly visual, okay? Um, what are some ways to make your writing more visual? Adjectives, give me some examples. Being descriptive. Being descriptive. So if I am saying that someone comes from the inner city, I have a choice. I could actually gloss over it and be a little bit vague, or I could kind of describe what their community looks like, you know, in like two or three words. I can say, you know, over broken bottles, you know, Kamal struggles, okay? And you all, that ends up in a lot of my log lines, struggle, because I just feel like immediately you feel like your, your character's under pressure. So you can tell me in two words what that community looks like, okay? Neatly trimmed lawns, you know, maybe you're trying to show me some type of juxtaposition. When I say juxtaposition, I'm talking about opposites. You're showing me how the world they're going into is different from the world they're coming from. All right, so what we want to do in a treatment is we want to establish the primary environment or environments, okay? If this character is leaving somewhere and going somewhere else, then they have more than one environment. The majority of your film is going to take place in either one environment or the other, but oftentimes the majority of the film is going to take place in the place that they're going to, the present environment. That old environment is used for creative tension or just to give us some backstory. Um, your treatment should also establish the time period. I can't tell you how many times I've read someone's script and I can't tell you what period it's written in. And if I'm financing a film, I want to know that because um, like this year, uh, things that were written in the 15th you know, century, 16th century are very attractive. You know, I need to know that. I need to know that this is that type of film, or I need to know that this is written in the present day. It's just that they're using the King's English because this is a different time or a different world that you're taking me into. So you need to tell me what time period I'm in. And also, quickly, if I am reading your script, and I don't know what time period I'm in, what happens to me? What happens to you when you're walking down the street and you don't know where you're going? How do you feel? Lost. lost. Okay, and if I am lost while reading your script, what am I gonna do next? Put it down. Put it down. I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna put it down because I'm so disoriented in terms of like what period I'm in it doesn't even matter what you tell me next. So tell me that so that I know and so I can focus in on what you want me to focus in on, which is this character that you want me to care about in this story. Um, you want to convey a distinct mood or tone. You know, you want to let me know. <clears throat> you want to let me know, am I supposed to be happy or sad? Um, because if you think about a lot of the comedies that come out, they're really dark, you know? The inciting incidents are dark. Somebody died, you know. Um, something happened, you know, Weekend at Bernie's. That could easily be a, a comedy or a drama. Someone died and they're trying to, to hide this man and make it look like he's alive. I mean, if you're just telling me that, but you're not able to convey some type of tone, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. So make sure you give me feeling in the writing. Um, you want to introduce your main characters. You want to provide any relevant backstory. Um, you need to give me backstory on a character. If you're showing me the growth of a character, if you don't give me the backstory, I don't know that the character grew. Okay. 
when I, we get to see the character's growth, what does that do for us emotionally? It gets you in tune with the character. Yeah, and I start like cheering the character on. I'm invested. I want to see them make it. But without having that backstory, how will I ever know? Um, introduce the antagonist. The antagonist does not always have to be a person. It could be a, a system. It could be nature. The antagonist could be the character himself. Have you all been watching Bates Motel? I got hooked in, I think like last week, it's a series, I forget which um, station it's on, but it's a, it's a take on Psycho, okay? So when you think about the story of Psycho, you know, he himself becomes his own antagonist. He's literally fighting against himself, you know, in terms of that particular story. So who's the antagonist? What is that force that's trying to keep the character from the goal? Bring that forward. Because just like that log line, just like this treatment, you need to create that push-pull and that tension in the line and in the page because that's what's gonna make me wanna keep reading to see what happens next. Um, illustrate a routine way of life and then see and show, show me how that life is disrupted, okay? Um, let's think about a log line and let's think about a treatment as a pond. So there's a pond before you, and that pond is serene, and that pond represents your log line and your treatment. That pond doesn't move. Is that the type of thing that you would want to read, something that does not move and is stagnant? Okay, so as a writer, as a creative person, it is your job to take rocks and boulders and throw them into that pond and make that water jump and move. That's what you want to do. However it is, you do it in your way as creative. Okay, theme. Okay, this is really important to me because I think theme always taps into the core of commonalities that we share as human beings. Um, sometimes we may see stories and they have nothing to do with our life experiences on the surface, okay? But seeing the emotions that the character goes through taps into something that we've experienced um, and that makes us care. So themes um, will transcend uh, color, gender, and even sexuality. Um, the Dallas, Buyers Club. Did anybody see it? Yes. Okay, you saw it. Okay, so it came out recently, um, was up for Academy Award, won a lot of awards this year, and it's a, it's a film about a man who contracts um, HIV and ultimately, basically his full-blown AIDS in that film, and he's going to die. Um, he's a very straight man. He's a very macho man. He has no interest in transsexuals, right? But his best friend in the film ends up being a, a transgendered um, male because they have a shared experience. And while he, that's the least usual suspects in terms of who he thinks his friends would be, all of his straight friends turn their back on him. So this is the last person standing. And this person ended up being more of a man in terms of friendships than anyone else around him. So what I'm saying is, I don't care what the, the story is that you're telling, when you're writing your characters, think about how does this character connect to other people and the rest of the world at large. Yeah, it took him a lot. Of, it took him a long time to get funding. Look, if you're writing that film, just just get ready to just ride that road and see what happens in terms of your funding. Um, transcendent themes resonate with us, and they cause us to think about, envision scenes, um, and feel the story again and again. So think about think about when you move away from the page. Because the thing about this, I can't tell you how to write. You know, that has everything to do with who you are as a person, your experiences, um, your vocabulary. And when I say that, you might have a big, broad vocabulary, 
or your vocabulary might be limited. Either way, it's the feeling behind your words. It's the placement of your words. You can actually do a lot with very simple words. Um, but when you write things down on the page, whether it is a log line, um, whether it's a, it's a treatment, you want me to feel your words even when I push the page away. You want me to walk away from these pages thinking, remembering, and feeling those feelings that I felt again and again and again. Okay, so um, there's some homework at the end of this that you can use to help you to think more about your characters. Um, and it's real simple and it's similar to what's in front of you. My main character is blank. He or she is a so-and-so um, who wants their life go. By the end of the script, he or she realizes that. Now, this isn't a log line, but this is the way that you think through your story. This is essentially your structure. This is, you know, the seedlings of your structure in terms of how you're going to work with this. And then the next one is thinking about your treatment in three acts. My film is a blank genre set in blank time and is a story about a blank character um, who attempts to blank their story or goal um, by XYZ method. Um, act two, along the way the character um, experiences this event and then this event, but the character doesn't realize that there's a major problem and then there's an even bigger problem, okay? Because in that second act, you don't just want one problem, okay? Mm -hmm. So if we were really looking at um, scripted work or a uh, narrative feature. If we were looking at a narrative feature um, and we were exploring this, there shouldn't just be one problem. There should be a problem and then you should be getting over that problem and maybe you should get over it. And just when you get over it, there's an even bigger problem. There's a, excuse me, there's an oh shit problem. And it looks like you're not gonna get this done. You're not gonna handle this business before the movie ends. You're sitting in your seat. You're afraid to look away from the screen, but you gotta look at your watch because you're like, they got 10 minutes. How are they gonna do this? Yeah. Okay, that's how you should feel. Um, and then act three, ultimately he or she has to evoke whatever strategy or face up to whatever potential consequences. So this is just helping you to structure out your um, treatment. So even if you're doing a documentary, they're not looking for your three acts. It should not say act one, two, and three, particularly with the documentary, but it's showing you what should be happening in terms of the movement. And here's what's tricky about a documentary, and I learned this going through the program. A lot of times they are asking you about a treatment, and how in the world do you write a treatment for a film that you haven't finished? You don't know the story yet, but you have an idea of what you think is gonna happen. And you have to know that your treatment, more than any other treatment, is going to change over time. So you start off with what you think you know and you write to that, and then you allow it to change as you continue to shoot. So you're constantly working on your treatment with the documentary. Okay, so a few words, then we have a quick exercise if we have time to do it. Um, every film begins in darkness, and it's up to you as a storyteller to orient the viewer to the world that you're exploring and the people that you are about to introduce them to. Okay, so that's you, that is your job. Do not come to the page lightly, okay? Make whoever is watching your film or reading your work feel it. You know, it's kind of like, for me, some things just aren't worth it unless I can feel it. I can't stand when I go to get a massage and somebody walks up on me and they do me like this. I want to turn around and hit them in the eye. Make me feel it, okay? Don't play, make me feel it. Arrive with your tools in hand and get ready cre to create a masterpiece. So whatever your tools are, your experiences, who you are as a person, what you have had access to in your life, everything that you did not have access to in your life, all of those things become your tools, okay? Because that helps you to connect and provide greater understanding and meaning. And allow your personality to permeate the page. So as a writer, even though you're creating this um, line or this, uh, this treatment, what sets you apart? You know, what's your thumbprint? You know, my thumbprint is that I love creating tension. 
You know, my thumbprint is that I love economy of language. So figure out what you do well and do it over and over again and let that be your thing. So I'll leave you with those things. This will come out to you. There's some really good stuff at the end of this. There's some books that you can check out on different types of writing. Um, there are also some links at the end of this presentation to Script City. So if you're writing um, a narrative film, you can pull any screenplay. If you're writing a spec script for television, you want to see the format, you can pull it from here. If you're in LA, you can go straight to the WGA library. It's free to walk in and get any script that you want. Um, Celtics, some people are writing narratives, but you don't have final draft. This format's like final draft, but it's not final draft. It's free. They just want your email address. Yeah, so check out Celtics. You don't, you're not going to see it. It's going to be emailed to you. Oh, okay. This is going to be yours. Okay. Somebody's going to give it to you. OK. Final draft. Um, that's a website that you want to check out as well. The Writer Store. OK. So there is, um, I came across, there's a book, but I also came across where they had a site up log lines that sell, where you can actually click and look through different log lines to challenge yourself and get an idea of what's selling. And sometimes I'm actually shocked. Some of these log lines to me are not that good. You know, I think it's based upon relationships. We all know that. And because we're working to build relationships, that's why our writing has to be that much better. So um, take some time, look over these. And there are also some screenwriting organizations. I need to add hours and some screenwriting contests. Um, also, really fast, on the WGA website, um, all of the screenwriting contests are under the diversity link as well. So the deadlines um, for like the ABC Diversity Fellowship, um, the Fox Fellowship, et cetera, you can find all that out of one of these links somewhere in this presentation. Thank you. Thank you.